fire hole fall. So we're standing at the uh, fountain paint pots. Bubble, bubble, for all your trouble. A small example of the kind of turmoil that goes on underneath our mantle. Constant bubbling and so notice the different consistency, the different level of activity between two just in two areas. Bacteria met. Now this is called the uh, leather pool. Beautiful walkway. Kind of a moonscape here in terms of the little crater this there. A little windier today. Fascinating deposits of uh, silica and various other items around this uh, really beautiful looking geyser. Here's another look. I'm not sure what this is called. Here's some solitary figures sticking up. Still not down. He actually did name this place Lodge Pole Pines. Forms and shapes of the residual wood. Here's a standing form that looks pretty neat. A shade of yellow. Here's the outflow coming off of the geyser up, up top side here. Another example of a, the coloration, the deposits that are made. Black diamond, huh? Oh man, the sapphire pool. Incredible. She said it's one of the deepest. It is incredible. It is gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> Assuming pool color mm -hmm. <laughs> and white, you know, around the edges. Yeah. So this must be alkaline still. 
because you think mm -hmm. it's white. Oh, it's bright. <laughs> cool. This is uh, Joel Geyser. It's got a beautiful center. This is uh, known as the Shell Geyser. You have to love uh, just how these formations here are of the 900 geysers in the world, apparently 500 are here. No name for this uh, incredibly beautiful spring here. Looks like a shipwreck. Continue with our theme of mermaids. Maybe even a sea star or two. You think? Looks like it. <laughs> Looks like it. We're just kidding. We just yeah. dove to the depths here. Yeah. And look how nice you got the darker blues and you got the greens and you got the various aquas. Oh. And then you got the yellow around the edges. It's a perfect frame. Uh, there's been a vote here for renaming it. We'll submit it to the National Park Service. This is called the Mustard Spring. We believe it should be called the Scallop. If you wonder what, what happened to the Black Pearl, its final resting place, here it is. Somewhere down there is Captain Jack and the crew. We're back yeah, at Sapphire, maybe uh, 40 yeah. minutes afterwards. I almost yeah, we'll smell chlorine here. <laughs> That's a good question. I'm not no, sure it's, it's, it's how this like, uh, uh, has been formed, there, but, but uh, fascinating nonetheless. Okay, so we're like Sand Basin and uh, catching some of the spring action here. Again, kind of a neat scene, huh? Water rushing out, flowing into the river. That little spouter in the middle is a geyser. It looks like there's a dormant kind of geyser over to the left of that. All the water deposits into this river. This is kind of a nice scene here at Black Sand Basin. All that coloration is a result of uh, bacterial production there. What a place called uh, Green Spring here on the basin. You can't really see the green at this point too clearly. And here we go, more color. Standing at the, the Emerald Pool. This is about the greenest we've seen it here. This is a nice one, no? Mm -hmm. Big one. I have to wait a minute. So you got two pools here. I think these are the biggest ones we've seen. Getting treated here to a little bit of a display of geyser activity. Splashing upward. Woohoo!
It's even noisy. Woohoo! What a treat. The real problem with this is it blocks your night vision because you need more and more light. Yeah. And in fact, I've already noticed it on fine print reads. Oh, yeah. That. If I don't have light on it, I can't really see. So? That's the thing, man. This is quite good. Can we pull over over here? Yes, as long as all your wheels are on the other side of the white line. Okay. It is smaller and younger. We're here at what's called the Gallatin Range. There's a nice pictorial here that tells you about what's what and the height. Behind us, they describe the fact that uh, there were two big huge mounds of lava and that magma. might be magma. Okay, that had flown in and solidified, and this may be one of them. The uh, waterfall is around the corner. We are over here at the Golden Gate. Heading on our way up to the north. Stop here on the other side of the Golden Gate just to take a look and see what these structures are like. Walk through here. Get another idea about the power of nature. Pasted itself here on the side of the rock. Mm -hmm. Up there. hanging around a rock and then over here just to give some perspective in terms of size well we understand this place is a product of a very large explosion
Nature finds a way. A kind of a panoramic view of uh, Mammoth Springs. Our first stop here notifies us that this is a very changing landscape. Well, I'm standing at the main terrace in Mammoth Springs. Down there in the valley you can see Mammoth Springs itself. And here is what that main terrace looks like across the way. Yeah. Yeah. So we look up and uh, turn around and see this incredible view of a geyser on the side there, like a big cauldron. You're going to see a lot of this because it's just every angle you look at it, it's got a different view. Just this gorgeous shot of the cauldron. The cauldron from a, a more straight on shot, but still pretty good away. And you get a bit of an idea of just the extent of it and how large it is. I have no idea why, but uh, what we're approaching is called Cupid Springs. A little closer view of it's Cupid. It's flowing. Mm -hmm. Cupid Springs. Another view of the main terrace. And then uh, as you pan over, you'll see this uh, fabulously red orangey spring emanating out of the ground. Grassy spring. Grassy springs from top towards the middle and towards the edge and down towards the bottom. Not sure but it uh, looks like colonies of something that is uh, growing in the water there. Well, this is the largest entrance to Hades we've seen since we got here. Okay, so here it is, our first view of a terrace on a terrace. And then you can see the white terracing that uh, goes up the slope there, which is really kind of neat, and I think that's what this area is known for, is those cascaded terraces. So you get a bit of a view of what uh, Mammoth Springs is really known for and is its coloration uh, and deposits and the terraces, just spectacular stuff. You see it? Mm-hmm. Cast no cast. Uh, here's an example of the uh, scalloped edge that forms here. Some of the crystallization that takes place. And then there you go, the terracing, which is brown down here in the bottom and gray and white at the top. So a little panorama here of the differences in the colors. So this is known as a Dryad Spring coming down here to the walkway. Okay, so this is known as a Canary Springs. And uh, what it says is a world of heat-loving microorganisms called thermophiles. Billions of them are here, uh, feasting on chemicals, living on sunshine. The chemical one is the filamentous bacteria, and uh, the living on sunshine is the cyanobacteria. A little different perspective. And there is water rushing down. Right there. Pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. And every time it's just soon up, like that. Mm -hmm. 
and it deposits down at the uh, base of the uh, mountain here. Dry. Active. Okay, looking down on the main terrace. Coloration. Extent. Bit of a view of composition of the material here. Okay, so that's the big guy, and this is the junior version of it. And as you can see, it's got a long way to go before it gets to the same size as its parent. And up on top, you'll see one of the little fractures out of which water comes out. And down here is a second one. Yeah, so... Okay, so we're uh, at the back end of the funnel here, and this is the terrace they call Angel Terrace. Doesn't look very active at this point in time. So you get some idea of uh, what this place can look like sometimes when there's no activity. Uh, there's a bit of activity that's occurring here in the terracing, and there's some small amount of liquid coming down the slope. Kind of a desolate look here to this when there's no activity. And uh, then this uh, there's this area looks like an area of total devastation. But who knows? In a few years this area could totally change depending upon what happens on the ground. Alright, so this is by the back lake which is empty but as you can see quite a bit of activity in this thermal cascade here quite a bit of color on the terrace a little bit of a spout coming up from up there you think this is the back of the big one? Could be, you know. Could be. Now, uh, figure that one out. This is the, uh, called the White Elephant Back Terrace. I didn't mean to. Step it's got a front, it's got a bunch of, you know, uh, exits at the base of it. Uh, they don't want you walking on it because it's very fragile, but... It looks like it's thermal areas. Yeah, <laughs> thermal areas because you can see some runoff on the minerals from that. So this is uh, at the base of the elephant's uh, back terrace. A second one underneath it. Third one, a third one. You can hear the water percolating here, underneath, even though this is a dead zone. That's how live this whole thing is. Hey, looking from the roller, from the parking lot, over at the uh, upper terrace, at the, to the lower terrace walkway, which we'll do tomorrow. Gorgeous shot. Okay, so we stayed at the Best Western in Gardner, Montana. About five miles out of the and parked here are some swings and uh, some wagons. <laughs>